All right, in this video, we're finishing up circuits and talking about RC circuits. Uh, so we've talked separately about capacitors, uh, how much charge they can they get, and this relationship uh, CV equals Q for a capacitor. Uh, so this is true for any time. So the capacitance of the capacitor is constant, and if we change the charge on the capacitor, the voltage will uh, also change according to this, this formula. Uh, we've also talked about resistors. So this is just putting those two ideas together. Um, this chat, this section is split into two parts. Uh, the first is a discharging capacitor, and then the second is a charging capacitor. Um, so the discharging capacitor is a little bit simpler because there's only two circuit elements, whereas a charging capacitor will have three because you have to you also involve the battery. So the differential equation setup is a, is a little easier for the discharging one. Uh, okay, so the setup for for analyzing this is. Um, you have a charged capacitor and it stays charged as long as this switch is open. Uh, so if the switch is open, there's no closed path from the top conduct from the top electrode, the top conductor to the bottom electrode. So the charge remains there because it, it's sort of stuck there. If we close the switch, now the charge actually can get from one side to the other. Um, and we want to keep track of uh, how much time that takes, or what's the charge of the capacitor over time, you know, for all times. So at t equals zero, we know the initial charge, we're going to say it's some constant q naught. After an infinite amount of time, it would have totally gone to the other side, and so the capacitor charge would be zero, but we want to know all the times in between. Um, so to analyze this, we're going to actually use a Kirchhoff loop rule. So as soon as we close the switch, and the switch is closed, so now looking at this diagram, um, the, we can use a Kirchhoff loop rule to say that, okay, starting here, we're going to just go around the circuit uh, clockwise, you know, with our finger and track the voltage changes. So the voltage across the capacitor, which, so I'm, I'm using this as the positive quantity because we're jumping from the negative to the positive side of the battery. Uh, and then minus the voltage across the resistor. So, so as soon as we close the switch, plus charge wants to get to the negative side. So current, conventional current is gonna be going in this direction. Uh, and generally your book likes to use, I guess they're still using, they're using a capital letter. Sometimes they use lowercase i for currents that are variable. Um, so that, that's the current, uh, which is gonna be a function of time. It's gonna change over time. You know, After an infinite amount of time, the current has died down to zero. So uh, this is obviously gonna depend on time. Uh, so the voltage of the capacitor, so the magnitude of that, that positive quantity minus the voltage across the resistor, which is I times R. So I is definitely a positive quantity. So in this equation, we're definitely, we definitely need I as positive and, and B is positive. This is equal to zero. We can rewrite this in a more illuminating form because um, right now there's, there's two unknowns. Uh, we don't know, even though we know the initial voltage across the capacitor, we don't know the voltage of the capacitor as a function of time. And then we also don't know the current as a function of time. Um, but we can rewrite this uh, in terms of another equation. So we can write both of these two quantities in terms of Q, the charge on the capacitor. Um, so using this equation, we can use that uh, the voltage across the capacitor is 1 over C times the charge on the capacitor. So C books using capital Q. So the charge is a function of time. Uh, so I'll just over to the side, I'll remind you that Q is not a constant in this equation. Q is a function. Uh, and then the current um, is going to be the, the derivative of charge with respect to time. Right. Um, so I'm holding off on writing the sign here because I want to I want to talk about uh, what's going on with the charge. The charge here is decreasing over time. Okay, so capital Q we're defining to be positive. Remember, we said that this voltage gain has to definitely be positive. This is definitely positive. So Q is the magnitude of the charge on the capacitor plates. DQ dt, because the capacitor is discharging, DQ dt is definitely negative. Right. So it, we definitely, it's a, this is a positive quantity by definition of Q. We definitely need this to be a negative quantity. Okay. So actually what we're going to write right here is a plus because the dq dt is already the negative sign. Uh -oh. Perfect. <laughs> oh no. Um, there we 
yeah so so this this is maybe a little weird because it, we have i is negative i is equal to plus dq dt but remember there, there's dq dt uh is is talking about the charge on this positive plate and then i is the magnitude of the current that's going through this resistor downwards all right so they're talking about two different locations of the circuit so if you're confused why there's a random minus sign coming in well we're talking about two different meanings of like what we mean by q versus i so this is why we kind of have to randomly throw in a minus sign um, but written this way with the plus sign it's consistent like this is a, a positive quantity plus a negative quantity equals zero which has to be the case right you can't have two positive things equaling zero um, so this is a differential equation again q is a function of time uh, so we have charge as a function of time and the derivative of charge with respect to time um, so you can actually move all the q's over to one side of the equation and all the t's over to the other side of the equation and you get this uh, and to solve this equation, you can just integrate both sides. So we're integrating from some initial time, t equals zero, to some final time, t. So actually, maybe this is a dummy variable of integration, t, t prime, and we're integrating that to t. And this is going to be initial charge, and this is going to be final charge as a function of time. So again, this is maybe a dummy variable of integration that we're going to label, later replace with q. Um, the final result we get is this right here. So the charge decays exponentially in time. Uh, so if we were to plot q uh, the remaining on the capacitor as a function of time, well, we had some starting value, and then it decays over time. So this is q naught e to the minus t over tau. Um, where I've defined tau, not just me, but the book and everyone else, has defined tau equal to r times c, the resistance value of the resistor times the capacitance of the capacitor. So actually, if you plug in ohms right here, and if you plug in farads right there, uh, a farad times an ohm is seconds. Uh, and this roughly tells you how long it takes for the capacitor to discharge. So after one tau, uh, so if one tau, uh, the charge decays down to about 37% of its initial value. Two taus, it's 80 something, it, it, it decays down to then it has between 10 and 20% of its original value. And three tau, you can plug this in and see that it's, you know, like 5% left over. I mean, it decays pretty quickly. After a few time constants, your capacitor is basically discharged. So this is a quick way of seeing how long it takes to, to discharge a capacitor. We could take a derivative of this with respect to time to get the current. So the current in the circuit was this minus derivative with respect to time. So again, this de definition is positive. The derivative is always negative here. So we need this extra minus sign to be consistent with our sign conventions. Uh, it looks like this is Q naught over tau e to the minus T over tau. Um, or it's the initial current in the circuit times E to the minus T over tau. So the, the um, current is also decaying exponentially. And the original current, the, the initial current, uh, is going to be, well, there was some initial voltage across this capacitor, and that's the amount going through this resistor. So you could set the original voltage equals I original, or you know, at the starting point times R. And so I naught is V naught over R. That's the value right here. Uh, okay, so this, this uh, example problem has you look at some data and uh, find out some information about the circuit from that. So the idea here is that you know that the uh, for a discharging capacitor, so we in this problem the capacitor is charged up to nine volts. We're sending it up. Uh, we're connecting it to a nine volt battery, so it's at, originally at nine volts, and then when we flip the switch, it, it, it's a discharging capacitor, and you're measuring measuring the voltage across the capacitor. So notice how the top here is connected to the top side of the capacitor and the bottom to the bottom side. So the voltage on the capacitor is a function of time. You can get uh, charge as a function of time, and if you plot these data points. They lie on a graph that looks like this. Uh, it's hard to make much sense of this, but if you take the log of each of the values, if you plot log, so this is Q versus T, if you plot log of the charge over time or log of the voltage difference versus time, remember they're proportional because CV equals Q, uh, then the data points fall on a straight line. And that straight line, the slope of that straight line tells you something about the time constant of the circuit. So if you knew one of like the, resistance or the capacitance you can solve for the other one. Okay, the, the next part uh, has to do with charging a capacitor. So this one, uh, we could 
your book just leaves it as a homework problem. We could at least set up the differential equation that you would solve. So if we close the switch uh, and this originally had no charge, or so, so the, the capacitor originally had no charge, but it's gonna start building up charge. Uh, and the way it builds up charge is, well, current's gonna wanna go this direction. And so positive charges start to collect on this plate. And as current leaves here at the same exact time, negative charge is left on that side of the capacitor. So this helps us uh, with our Kirchhoff loop rule, because now we know, so if we start here, let me switch pen color. If we start here, we jump up uh, an amount E, and then we're, we do minus IR. Uh, the current is a function of time times R, and then it's a voltage drop across the capacitor, minus um, Q over C is the voltage across the capacitor. And here the current is, uh, so this I is defined to be positive. Um, the current is dQ dt, but this time I is plus dQ dt with a plus sign because the charge on the capacitor is going up over time. So dQ dt is positive. We want I to be positive, so this is consistent. So when we replace for I right here, we do E minus dQ dt times R minus Q over C. And this has this solution, which looks sort of similar there's a decaying exponential in here, but we want that at t goes to infinity, when this, this part's zero, there to be some final charge on it. Um, so that's why the form looks a little bit different. So this is the charge as a function of time for this. It starts off at zero and then it charges up and it asymptotes at its maximum value. And the maximum value is where the voltage across the capacitor is the voltage of the battery. Uh, in this example, if you look here, so the capacitor takes some time to charge. And again, there's the same time constant. So if you look at this formula, there's the same tau. Tau is still R times C. Uh, so it roughly tells you how long this thing takes to charge too. After a few time constants, you're like most of the way there. Um, so in this right here, this, this capacitor, when the switch is in position A, uh, the capacitor will eventually charge up to 50 volts. Uh, and it takes a couple of time constants where the time constant is if you multiply these two quantities together, 1200 times 200. 1200 ohms times 200 microfarad. Uh, so, so this capacitor charges up. You can keep track of how long it takes to charge up. If you wait a long time, it'll fully charge up to 50 volts. And then you split the switch, and then it'll start to discharge through this capacitor. So we've once you flip the switch from A to B, you're totally removing these parts from the circuit. And that's just the discharging capacitor that we looked at before. So this problem uses that information, uses that way of an analyzing the problem, but also looks at energy flow. So the capacitor had some initial energy stored on it. And at some time t later, after t equals zero, when the switch is flipped, it will have some less energy. And where did that energy go? It was dissipated by the resistor. So this, this problem is showing how that's true. So it's calculating the amount of energy dissipated by the resistor using our formula for power. Uh, and that's also calculating the initial and the final energies on the capacitor and showing that the amount of energy is the same for both. Uh, well, the amount of energy lost by the capacitor is the amount dissipated by the resistor. All right, so for this problem, um, we have a circuit and the switch is very similar to this one. So initially the capacitor is allowed to charge up and we say that it's been connected for a long time initially. The capacitor is fully charged initially. Um, so that means that the initial voltage across the capacitor is 12 volts because if, if, if it, if we wait a long time, there's no more current going around this part of the circuit. So there's no voltage drop across the resistor. And so a Kirchhoff loop roll will tell you that the voltage across the battery is the voltage across the, the capacitor. They have the same magnitude. Okay, so if we flip the switch, we have a capacitor where the initial charge is C times V naught, or it looks like one millifarad times 12 volts. Looks like this is 12 millicoulomb. So maybe that'll be useful as well. So that was the initial charge on the capacitor. Um, give an equation describing the current through the six kilo ohm resistor as a function of time. So we know that, uh, so for a discharging capacitor, we know that the current as a function of time is the initial current times e to the minus t over tau. So this is the equation where tau is equal to r times c. Uh, and plugging in values here, this is the six kilo ohm resistor. Remember, after you close the switch, this part is irrelevant because it's not part of the closed circuit. Uh, so six kilo ohms and one millifarad. Uh, so it looks like this is six seconds. 
So after about 20 seconds or so, this capacitor has fully discharged, but it takes a little while. If it was just one second, it would it would still have a, a good amount of charge on it. Uh, so that's what you would plug in here. And then for I naught, this is um, the easiest way to figure this out is well, the initial uh, voltage across the resistor is 12 volts, the voltage of the battery. Uh, so I naught is V over R, V naught over R, just using Ohm's law for the resistor. And the initial voltage was 12 volts, and the resistance is 6 kilo ohms. So it looks like this is 2 milliamps. So I naught is 2 milliamps. So if we were to plot this current as a function of time, uh, we start off at 2 milliamps and we decay exponentially. And this is about 6 seconds right here. That's how long it takes to decay down to about 30. 7%. So this I naught is 2 milliamps. Uh, okay, part B. How much charge passes through a 6 kilo ohm resistor as a result of the capacitor discharging? Um, so, charge is the integral of uh, um, so we, we can do part B two different ways. So, so first of all, we already know the answer. Uh, it's 12 millicoulombs. Uh, because it's, you know, it was 12 millicoulombs on the top right here of the resistor uh, and minus 12 millicoulombs on the bottom. And if the positive charge are the things that are moving, you know, 12 millicoulombs has gone from the top side to the bottom side. So we already know the answer is, uh, should be 12 millicoulombs. So that, that's a perfectly fine way of solving the problem. Uh, we're just going to do it another way to show another way of thinking about it. Uh, the charge is also the integral of the current over time. So if you integrate, so the total charge passing through that, that resistor is the integral of this from zero to infinity. So looking at all times, because if you stop at some time less than infinity, then it might not be the full 12 millicoulombs. Right? Um, so this would be the integral of our function. Uh, so we have the integral of two milliamps times e to the minus t over tau. Dt um, from zero to infinity. So we can take out the two milliamps. Uh, and it looks like this is just going to give us a factor of tau. So you can show that that integral will be tau. Uh, and two milliamps times our tau was six seconds, right? Two milliamps times six seconds gives us 12 uh, millicoulombs. So that's good because we thought it should be 12 millicoulombs anyway, because that was the initial charge on the capacitor. Uh, 